Do you all want to see something ridiculous that I have no business buying? But I did because I was enabled. Sealing wax. Do I need this? No. I don't. Look at that. I mean, that handle's gorgeous, but do I need this? No. I need for all you crafters that I follow to stop posting the fun things that you're doing because my wallet's mad. <laughs> but also keep doing it because I love it. All right, let's get into it. Take 76. <laughs> Good peacemakers, welcome back to the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my crafty corner of the YouTube universe. If you would like to find me on other social medias, you can do so by following me over on Instagram as Peace for Peace Crafting. It's the same on threads if you're into that. Uh, if you would like to follow me on Ravelry, you can do so by following me at Peace for Peace Craft. And if you're into music and you want to follow along to the playlist that goes with this podcast, you can do so over on Spotify by following the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast playlist. How are we all doing? I'm exhausted. <laughs> and it's so rainy here today. Um... Yeah, so for those of you who are new, welcome. There's been some of you that have joined our fun little chaotic and silly community over here ever since the Tube Dudes Live, which we will talk about in just a second. So welcome to all of you, my friends who have been here before. Welcome back. I'm so happy that you all are picking and choosing to spend a little bit of time with me during your day. Um, it means a lot. For those of you who are new, if you enjoy this content and you're like, oh, this dude seems kind of silly and I'm into what he's making, feel free to do all that fun YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. Mostly the subscribing part and liking part, it costs nothing to you. It helps the ag algori algorithm? algorithm push my videos into the nests of YouTube and other folks, um, and helps other folks who might be into this find me as well. All right. Um, yeah, it's rainy here in Chicago today. It's been like 50 degrees, y'all, which Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit Celsius, folks. I'm sorry, friends, do the math. But it's been like 50 degrees here in the middle of December. Um, yeah, that's uh, not right. Uh, which I'm hoping that that doesn't mean that then winter, when it finally does decide to come, will not last until June, which can happen here. That is not fun, friends. I would love a spring. And at the rate we're going, I mean, it feels like spring for reals right now, kind of. Um, like, I just, I want that for all of us. So fingers crossed on that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so things have been crazy, busy. Um, the last time I was with you all, you kind of got a double header. It was, I put out an episode on Saturday and then the next day was the Tube Dudes Live event that happened on Sunday where there was Stuart from The Wool Patch, uh, Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready, myself and Chip and Aaron of Fiber Hustle all came together to share some of our Fun holiday, ho holiday. Today is gonna be about words not coming out right. Um, holiday traditions, and there are fun prizes, and everyone shared some really great things. So if you have not seen that, and you're into that sort of stuff, you can go 
on YouTube, if you look under each person's channel, there's a live, um, what is that, section, and you can click on the live and then it should be there. Those live videos don't show up in people's feeds like normal videos because that's the way that YouTube categorizes them. Um, but that was a really lovely event, so I was kind of spent after that and then really just spent the past two weeks trying to get one of my FOs done because it was due. I'm sure you can guess what it is, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, all right, so um, because this is in the future, uh, there was, uh, and if you did watch two, Tube Dudes Live, there was a word scramble. That person has been emailed. Their prizes have been sent to them. And since we're on the prize kick right off top, let's get into uh, giving some stuff away at the start, right? Because why not? It's the holidays. We want things. Um, or maybe you don't want things. I don't. I just, I want experiences. So like, I don't know. Don't buy me, like I've been telling people like, please don't buy me anything. Like I just don't, I don't need it in my house. I don't want it. Let's go to a dinner. Let's go to a movie. Let's go look at the zoo lights. Like something like that, that's gonna be more of like a memory for me versus some like material thing that, I don't know, I could potentially throw away in like two years time. Unless it's crafting related, like I'll pass. Most of the people know, just give me something crafty or a gift card to something crafty and I'm loving it. So, honey, today's about tangents as well. All right, so I went through, I wrote down the names and I went through the comments on the last video. All you all had to do was put holidays in the comments and then I was gonna pick one person to give away this, I'm not opening it all the way up because look, it looks, friends, it's gonna look like this when you open it. Mine's a little bit of a mess right now. It's a little bag. You can tuck, you can tuck this in and close it up. It's from Beautiful Sister. They sent some, like, I love this so much. This one is uh, with fiber, fiber, with fabric <laughs> that was dyed by Spin Cycle. This one is mine. You cannot have it. I'm so sorry. Although I think they have some new things that are going to be in their shop soon, which I'm very excited about. Um, I'm so sorry. Like a wave of thoughts just came into my head. That's how today's going to be. Speaking of which, have you all been watching Vlogmas? Anyone? Like, if I'm being honest, that's kind of usually not, like, my thing. Like, every now and then I might watch, like, one or two of someone and just be like, oh, okay, that was fun. Um, it just seems a little bit voyeuristic in a way that I don't know if I'm into or I didn't think I was into. And then this year, because, um, I think I talked about it, like, I'm not in the theater for the holidays this year. Um, so I like have all this time, well not all this time, but like I have time that I would normally be in a theater with um, to do like what normal people who aren't theater folk do during the holidays. And so like I found myself watching some vlogmases and Beautiful Sister is doing one. And so I've just been watching um, the two of them go back and forth. They're doing theirs where one does one day, the other one does the other day. So they're going back and forth. And it's been really cool to just like see their behind the scenes, whether it's making just like normal life. Like, yeah, that's been really cool getting to know them in a different way a little bit more. Um, I've also been watching the Slip Slip Ginge podcast like consistent, like every day. It's kind of in like my breakfast watching. Like I get up there like 15 minutes, watch an episode. And I've really been loving Tashi from Stitches and Starlight. Um, those have really been just like quality. <laughs> I don't know. There's something very calming about watching, especially because some of hers are just like her sitting and spinning and like talking about a topic. 
so I don't need to really focus I can just like have it on while I'm making and yeah it's like very calming for me anyway you all should go check those out I'll link them down below anyway all that to say you all put in the comments <laughs> holidays and that was to win this is one of the bags that I just showed so this is a holiday bag I beautiful sister sent these over they're so kind so generous and I wanted to give this one away especially because it's got a holiday vibe it's got sparkles we love that um and so you all came out in full force now they sent over a couple other bags and i was like i'm gonna wait to like find a time to give those two folks but um within the past two weeks i was just thinking like why <laughs> Like, why not just, like, send them to people now? So, here's the other one. The same little sort of origami top style bag, like, bento box. It's got moons on it. It's fun. Uh, there's some full moons over here. Uh, this is cool. If you are into the winter solstice, moon phases, all that stuff, that's fun. And then this fun little, oh, it's so cute, little number two. This would be great for like smaller projects, a hat, mittens, a couple pairs of socks. Honestly, a small shawl, the beginning of it really. Um, so I'm gonna give away these three. Why not have at it? So I've pulled three people. Now, here's how this is gonna go. I'm going to read off the person's name. I'll try and be fancy and put it down below on the screen. And you just have to either get back to me on Insta or on Ravelry, if Ravelry, Ravelry, Ravelry is accessible to you. Just like reach out to me via one of those two things and I'll get all your deets and I'll send it out to you. Now, if you are a winner and you live overseas, <laughs> Cause that could happen, right? Cause like some of you all don't live uh, in the continental United States. Um, I would rather you contact me and then we have a chat where I will just gift you a bag of equal value to someone that's like close to you. It's like cutting down on our, um, eco footprint like and I'm not spending like two hundred dollars to ship you something that's like way less than that <laughs> so either way you're getting something it's gonna be great people let me know all right so the first person this was all like one of those random YouTube picker things um, you all this is my rocket notebook <laughs> this episode is chaotic um, it's one of those reusable notebooks. Do you all use these? I love mine. Uh, so the first person is 218Lorna. 218Lorna. Uh, you're a winner. <laughs> you're a winner, baby. Um, the next person is, which is funny because I just started following them uh, recently, Just Living Designs. Just Living Designs. Hey, friend. And the last one is Claudia Collier, 1911. I hope I said your last name right. Or if that's your just name, period. Uh, Claudia Collier, 1911. That'll be posted here too. So if the three of you could just reach out to me, let me know what's good. I would love to pop those in the mail, hopefully this week. Um... You all know how the post works. You may not get it before the holidays. You may haps, you might get it before the holidays, who knows. Either way, it will be in the mail to you. I will, I can also send you the uh, tracking number so that you can, I mean, if you're like me, you can watch it slowly make its way to your house. Anywho, so with that being said, 75 minutes in. Let's talk about some things, shall we? All right, I have a couple things to share with you, friends. 
I have two FOs. I have one. No, that's a lie. One. <laughs> one nothing. I have two FOs and three whips that I'm currently working on. Um, I have a project that I want to share with you all. I have um, a book that I got that I want to share with you all. Anyway, we'll get into all that. All right, so the first thing that I have for you, if you did not watch the Two Dupes Lo Tube Dudes Live, um, I was working on this in the last episode. I finished it literally um, in time for that live. That happens the next day. But in case you didn't watch it and you would like to see, I finished my Jason's Cashmere hat. Everything that I'm talking about you all will be linked down below. So this is my Jason's Cashmere hat. This was knitted in um, Peace Fleece Worsted. And so that is 75% uh, Navajo Rambouillet Domestic Fine Wool and 25% Mohair. It is lovely. Um, I'm finding, I don't know if we talked about this. I'm finding that I'm really digging um, just like more rustic or just like different blends that aren't super wash for my makes lately. I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm um, not a person that has like... Um, what am I trying to say? Skin sensitivity to things like the, the what some might find to be very coarse uh, yarns, materials, whatever. So like, yeah, I'm really digging that. I feel like they're really my jam right now. And so this really falls into it. I, since I showed this on the live, have been wearing this hat nonstop. Um, Maybe not the days where it's been really warm here unseasonably, but definitely in the mornings when I go to walk Kendrick, I pop it on because um, it is quite cold in the morning still. Uh, so this is in the Baltic blue. So many of you were very quick in the comments last time to be like, that's Baltic blue. I love Peace Fleece. I love that for all of you. So thank you for helping me out because I completely forgot what the color was. Um, yeah, I love it. This is a free pattern. There are, you can see, maybe, there's a tiny little halo. It was rustic. Um, I Oh, a couple, one thing. So in the pattern, you are, it's free, so it's fine. You're gonna do a certain number of cables. I cut one of them out. Um, I, I think this was knit on, I don't remember. Sixes and eights, it was. US six, US eight. US six for the ribbing, US eight for the body of the hat. I personally don't like hats that um, like make me feel like a gnome. Like I like gnomes, but like I don't, like I don't wanna go out looking like a gnome. If it's not on purpose, you know? Like shout out to David the gnome. Um, so I like, I cut one out because I wanted it to be more beanie style. And fit, I mean, can you even? And fit a little more snug to my head. Um, I recognize I could have knit it to pattern and then the brim would have been longer, but like, mama, I worked on these cables. I need them to be seen. Uh, so yeah, this works for me. The down downside to the hat is that it is only written for one size, but if you, are adventurous you can change the yarn weight probably and change the needles and get a size that <clears throat> excuse me will be better suited to you um, I have a big head so it worked out for me so that is thing one that's my Jason's cashmere hat I love it I've been wearing it so much I need to make another one. there's a couple hats that I want to remake and this is definitely one of them. Like I want another, I want another one of these. I want another teeny weeny beanie, and I want another siege hat. I need them all. Before the season's out, I shall have them. Okay, so that's it. Um, let's move on to whips. 
I'm just kidding. I could hear some of you being like, I know you are not gonna not talk about. All right, so my, <laughs> y'all are funny. My second, my glasses, I'm so sorry you all. My glasses are so dirty and I'm trying to be cool about it, but like it's getting on my nerves. So my second FO is the test knit that I was working on and I'm done with it. And I'm so excited to be done with it. Not because it, um, like I was over it. I'm excited to be done with it because like I had so much fun making it. Like, yeah, I learned a lot doing it and that's always fun. And I'm just so happy with the way that it turned out that, yeah, it, for me, it was a 10 out of, oh, that's horrible. It was a 10 out of 10 experience. Um, I recognize something about myself also in doing this is that I've done a couple test knits now. Um, surprisingly, just off the top of my head, three of them have been sweaters. And um, what's funny about that is I, I, I enjoy test knitting. I think it's a lot of fun. Like, ooh, I'm gonna try to find your mistakes so that it's better for everyone. Um, but it does give me a little bit of anxiety once I get closer to the deadline and I'm like not done with it. Like, honey, panicked. <laughs> not that it like means anything, but like I want to get it done in the time frame that it's been allotted. So I definitely had that. I did get it done. I'm not pressed about it. So this was just as a refresher to everyone. This is the officer sweater that is coming out. So you're probably seeing, well, I don't know when you're seeing this. I don't know your life. You are watching this. And um, if you're watching it close to when it comes out, the pattern will be out soon. And if you're watching it later, like a week later than, than it coming out, then the pattern's already out. What are you doing watching this? Go to, or like, minimize me, go to Ravelry or to the Lake Garcon website get the pattern and then make me big again. So this was knit using the Le Garcon Woolcott Yarns Fluff, so their collaboration. And the two colors that I, so that yarn is a sport weight. It's uh, 219 yards for 50 grams. And it's 55% baby alpaca, 18% fine merino wool, 17% mulberry silk, 10% yak, 100% dreamy. Um, so this is what that label looks like. I wanted to knit it in the yarn that it was designed in, because why not? This yarn is beyond 100% dreamy. It's so light and so just like cozy. I feel like I'm getting like a soft little angel hug. It's just so nice. Uh, the colors that I used were Shadow and Cold Rain. I had four skeins of the Shadow and three of the Cold Rain. I had about 31 grams left of the Shadow and 36 grams left of the Cold Rain at the end. <clears throat> this was knit, it's a, okay, so much to talk about, kind of. It's an intarsia pattern. So it was my first time doing intarsia. What? Get into it. Um, it was my first, is that true? Yeah. My first like fully seamed piece. So you do a cast on, you knit, you know, you knit the front, you knit the back, you knit the sleeves flat and then you seam everything together. Um, so that was cool. I will say that the intarsia, while in the beginning I was like, ooh, this is gonna be hard. Oh my gosh, the dog. He thinks that he's gonna protect something. He's gonna protect nothing. The wind makes our front door rattle a little bit. And so he thinks someone's coming in to do Lord knows what. So he's gotta protect us. Child, if you wrestle a bag in his vicinity, he runs out of the room. 
And now he's gonna whine. You wanna go check? You wanna go see? No one's coming in here. Yeah, lie down. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, the intarsia. The intarsia, I was a little bit scared of it at first, but it's been something that I've really been wanting to learn how to do. We've talked about this before. The intarsia couldn't be easier. Like I watched a couple videos, I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's it, great. I love this for you, I love this for me. Did the thing, did the same thing on the back. The sleeves, the last time I was with you, I just, um, I was doing this, I did the sleeves two at a time, and I think I just finished the ribbing for the cuffs, or like I was into the, rib I don't really remember. I had like done a little bit of ribbing. So what I did was I did the ribbing, magic loop, in the round, and then because the sleeves were knit flat, I just, well, I took one of them off and then I just had to re-situate it so that I could knit flat on both of them and I just knit them flat. Now, was that a little bit of a pain, having four balls of yarn pulling from at the same time? A little bit. Once I figured out how I was flipping um, the, the garment while I was knitting it, it ended up being totally fine and it, there was no tangling or whatever. Um, <clears throat> One mod that I did to the pattern was my arms are long. And so because of like, because of the way that the pattern is written, you're like knitting each block <clears throat> for a certain number um, of rows. And so I just added some length and it was fine and finished it off. And I think it looks great. Um, what else can I say about it? Then you go in and you do the collar. Yeah. If you're interested in doing intarsia, I think that if you are... You just want an adventure. <laughs> and you want to try something fun, this would be a great pattern to try. Honestly, like, give it a go. I think, and I'm pretty sure I've said this before here, I think that... Um, being a part of this community, sometimes we can hear others say, oh, this, oh, X is hard. And then that seeps into us. Or we see something and we go, ooh, that looks hard. I can't do that. When in actuality, it's all just playing around. So like, if you, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're like, okay, so-and-so thought that was hard, like that's wild for them. Like, I, I wanna try it, I'm not gonna let that stop me. Then like, just try it. If it doesn't work, rip it out. It's fine. Um, so yeah, like, if you wanna try Antarja, this is a great pattern to try it with. The seaming <clears throat> was, because this yarn is so fluffy, it was a little bit difficult to to see where to go into just to pick up um you know to pick up those ladders to seam it together but once i got the hang of it and like honestly i just really like would separate a little section like the last stitch and the garment just so i could really see and then i would go in and it was ever it was whatever it did take me a while it probably took me two Christmas movies to get through the seaming. So like, was that four hours maybe? Four, four and a half hours? Which, I mean, is that a long time? That's how long it took me to bind off my slip extravaganza. That was the Stephen West mystery shawl from 2020. So like... Either I'm doing a long eye cord bind off or I'm seaming up on entire garment. <laughs> Who's to say if that's a long time? <clears throat> so yeah, I th it was fine. It was great. Um, I watched a video on how to set in the, sh the shoulders. That's a very pink knits tutorial. I'll try to remember to link that below too. Super easy, very helpful. I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's it, great pinned everything out, seamed that up, went down the bottom. It was great. I love it. I'm so excited. I may have worn it out already. Um, 
just because I was like, this needs to go outside. <laughs> and got a lot of compliments on it and I was really digging it. Um, yeah, all right. So again, that's the officer sweater. It's by Maxim Sear. This is a test knit. It should be coming out soon. Go and get the pattern. It's great. Sport weight. Live your best life. There's so many fun color combinations that you could do. Like, ugh, I can't wait to see what people do with it. All right, that is all that I'm finished with. <laughs> that was a lot. All right, let's talk about what I'm working on. Or, you all, before we, <clears throat> Why am I so groggy all of a sudden? Before we talk about what I'm working on, I'm gonna talk about something that I'd like to cast on, only because it's sitting on top of all of the stuff that I'm working on and I wanna move it so that <laughs> I can get to my other stuff. All right, so, you all. Ah, don't fall. Aw. Um, I saw, uh-uh, leave it. We all remember how Kendrick thought that he could knit. He needs not go near the yarn anymore. Actually, he doesn't really bother it. He's just gonna sniff it. Anyway, okay, so I saw this pattern come out probably like most of us did and gasped when I saw the photo um, because it's absolutely stunning. And I was like, I need this in my life. So this is the, I I'm, I'm, believe I'm pronouncing this correctly, The Artist Shawl by Natasha Hornby. This is the, okay, first of all, I printed this at, I'm whispering like they're gonna hear me. I printed this at work, honey, that laser printer, get into the sink, quality. Um, This shawl is, what? I'm sorry. Stun Alicia. It is mosaic. Is that true? I believe so. Yes, it's mosaic. Mosaic knitting. We love it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to need this at some point in my life. And so I sat down and because um, Knit Picks was having a sale, um, I had to buy stuff for it. <laughs> I mean, I bought some other things too. I'm not gonna show them here now. I'll show those later. But, um, so it's a sport weight shawl and I'm using Wool of the Andes sport weight and it's, they come in 50 gram balls. It's 137 yards per 50 gram ball. <clears throat> this is gonna be my color palette. I sort of modeled it after um, the sample which normally I don't really do, but I just love the sample so much. I was like, I kind of need that same vibe. So this is what I'm going for. This is ash. Yeah, this is ash, just a gray. Um, this is Wonderland Heather. So this like, I mean, it's very blown out. It's giving sea foam, really. It's pretty. Um, this is Merlot Heather, so like a brown, fun little, oh, so gorgeous. Wait, can you see the Heather on this one? No, it's too light. Um, this is Mink Heather. Oh, I got a lot of Heathers, that's funny. So like more of a khaki-ish color. And my last one is Turmeric. So that goldish, golden yellow. So this is gonna make up my palette for this shawl. Now, I'm not starting this anytime soon. Sorry, I'm throwing all this on the floor. I'm not starting this anytime soon, but I do have one more episode that will come out before the new year, right? So we're in the middle of the month. There's one more just after, no, not after the winter holidays. It's before the new year. It's gonna come out, another episode will come out. And I realized that this year I didn't do any, I mean, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, or not, whatever, who cares, and along. But I thought that this might be kind of fun to just like kick off the year. Is anybody interested in doing this show? <laughs> it could be five of us and I don't care. Um, anyway, look into it. 
Artist Shawl, Natasha Hornby. See if you're into it. Start of the new year. I think I'm gonna cast mine on the first. That's gonna be my like New Year's Day cast on. And let's let's talk it out right now. Let's say that we're gonna have an along, a knit along. For that, I'll come up with a hashtag for the next episode. Then we can start using it if we wish. Um, it'll be like a couple days before. You already making one? Great, put it in there. I don't care. I just want to see what everybody's doing. Their color palettes. I want to. I want to see what you're making. I think even somebody else is doing a knit along for it during that time too. I don't remember who. I heard it on someone's podcast, but I will look into it. I think um, Casey from Young Folk Knits is making one right now. Taji might be. Tashi might be making one too. Someone else. Anyway, it's like. It's in the ness of it all right now. I kind of want to start on January 1st. Let me know if you're into it. Um, I'll come up with a hashtag the next episode. It'll be our, our Christmas day. It won't be our Christmas day. It'll be our New Year's day cast on. And let's say um, we start January 1st and it'll go until February 29th. Hello, leap year, get into it. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like fun. Two months to finish it all. I think we can do it, you guys. If we push ourselves, we can finish it. Um, great, so that's been settled. Let's get into some whips, shall we? We'll fly through them. All right, so um, first thing, well, two things. Same, same, but different. Beautiful sister bags, mushrooms. It looks like something spilled on it, but I don't think anything spilled on it. And bees. These are both housing socks. Both of the socks are Woolens and Nosh because I have a problem <laughs> with bags and Woolens and Nosh. Both of my socks uh, will be knit on US1 needles. Uh, I do a Turkish cast on. I uh, increase to 68 stitches. I knit a tube. I place my markers for where I want my heel. I do the tube until the ancestors tell me to stop. I do some ribbing. The same thing for the ribbing. I wait for the ancestors to tell me to stop. I cut in a heel. We call it a day. If I miss something, just like ask me. It's like very basic vanilla socks, you all. I I love a pattern sock, but like I love a vanilla sock, especially on the self-striping. So the first sock that I'm gonna show, I'm actually just gonna open up the bag because it's gonna be too hard to pull all this stuff out, is, see that? This is uh, both. Oh, both of the socks are also on her 9010 Targi uh, nylon base. So this is Sunfish. Love that orange. It's so bright. And I think for both of these, I had just done a color repeat for them um, the last time I was here. And here's where I am with those. Oh my God, they're so cute. These have been um, my like at home socks that I work on. Um, honestly, they've been my middle of the night when I'm someone who lives with anxiety. And so in the middle of the night, sometimes I'm up for no reason for like an hour um, until I can fall back asleep. And so these sit by my next to my bed and I try not to get out of bed when that's happening and I will just grab my knitting and I'll just knit and count and put on like some soothing music and that helps me to just like zonk back out. Um, so these have really been knit in the middle of the night. <laughs> They're great. Um, loving the colors. This is one of those, you know, um, I talked about this last time, Michelle does like just a simple, they're not called simple, but you know, just like a three stripe little friend. Um, and it, this one came with this insanely bright orange mini that I love. So those are going to be the heels. I've already placed my markers for the heels. That wasn't done in the middle of the night. I had to concentrate and do that. Um, <laughs> so I have, I think, the last time I checked, just looking at the yarn, I have one, two, three, four, one, is that right? One, two, three, four, yeah. Four more gray stripes that I'm going to get to. So four more repeats. And then 
I'm gonna start my ribbing. I'll probably start my ribbing in this light blue color and then switch to the orange just so that it sort of looks the same. Um, but these are great, I love them. They've been a lot of fun. They've been helping me go to sleep. I love that. That's, oh, put it in the bag the right way, Michael. Put it in the bag the right way. All right, that's pair of socks number one. So those should be done soon. Pair of socks two is the November Mystery Yarn Club color. So that colorway is, do I have the tag? Holographic Glow. Yeah, and again, it's on the 9010 uh, Targi Nylon. It's 411 yards, Woolens and Nosh. We love, you all know the deal, I'm obsessed. I have have been keeping up with the club um, as they've been coming, you know, just knitting them as I go. I've been loving watching everyone open their, or not open, because it's, I mean, we're halfway through the month, um, knit their advent from Mons and Nosh. It made me a little bit like, oh, you should have gotten one. But also, like, I have so many other things I'm dealing with that I just, I can't. Um, okay, anyway, here those are. <laughs> what? These are super bright, too. I love the yellows. They're, like, flashy. Um, so this is Holographic Glow, Obsessed. Um, yeah, I think I was only one repeat in last time. These two also already have their stitch marker. These have been my commuting. Um, I went to a show last night, and I knit during the dance concert. It was good high schoolers they're fine um it was actually very entertaining a lot of k-pop dance clubs i was like get into it um so i knit some of this during the show knit these while i'm commuting yeah these are almost done too i think i have i think i'm only going to do one more repeat actually to one more yellow section and then i'm going to just cap these because they're getting pretty long so this is holographic glow i'm loving it good times good times all right last up is did I I don't remember if I talked about this last time but the last maybe no I didn't all right so since this baddie is done I pulled back out my Seaside Tea by Cheryl Mokhtari. I knew it would come to me. Mokhtari. I'm using Fonty Worsted and Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. The Fonty doesn't have colorways. The Fisherman's Wool is in the brown heather, and I'm actually going to go to Joanne to get more of it today because I'm about to run out. I only had one, one, it's not really a ball. I just had one thing of it. It's like 485 yards or something. And so I'm almost done with this, but like I'm, I am, I knew I was gonna need more at some point. So anyway, I've pulled that back out. And let me tell you, I tried it on, let me show it first. So I pulled that back out and Here's that. I was the end of this blue, this blue stripe last time, so I've done a whole repeat. I have one more repeat to do, and then I can start the ribbing. So this should be done, well, the body of this should hopefully be done this weekend. And then I can go back in and do the sleeves and the collar. The sleeves, I think I'm only gonna do one repeat. Yeah, because that'll give me, I think, three, wait, one, two, three. That'll give me six inches of sleeve, like, after this, which I think will be pretty good, a good length. I mean, I'll try it on to see. But I did try this on, and remember how, well, for those of you who have been here, remember how I was like, uh, I don't really know if this collar is gonna work out for me. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't the collar. It was the saddle shoulder because they're quite, they're quite small. 
right? Because it's probably desi designed for um, a more uh, feminine fit. And I was worried about it, but I tried it on and it's like totally fine. I think after blocking too, I can like try to just like open up those stitches a little bit more to get myself a little bit. I will say though that the yoke depth, when I put it on, it was like giving me, not like in my armpit. So it was like, I would close my arms and like, it was like at the crease of my armpit. But it was just like, it was very armpitty. Um, and so I'm hoping that with a little bit of blocking that will relax, even if it's just like a little bit, I'll be down with it. But I thought the fit was pretty good, honestly. And so it made me excited to get back to this and be working on it. And it's it's short sleeve. Um, and I only had two, once I tried it on, I was like, oh, you have 11 inches. I did, I like measured out how many inches a repeat was and I only needed two repeats it was like 11 inches or something and that's including the ribbing um so yeah this is gonna be done soon I think the colors are so fun it's super cute um and it was all in stash that fisherman's wool man it's so good I love it and it's cheap it's like ten dollars a ball I'm gonna I need to go to get another um all of it just to finish this but like a little bit I'm nervous that I'm gonna get there and then I'm gonna leave with like another sweater quantity of it and like I'm not saying it like it's a horrible thing like oh my god another sweater quantity like no but like also <clears throat> a little bit like oh my god another sweater quantity no um I the other day something that I found that's been helping me recently is like like, I love making lists and then, because, like, who doesn't like crossing things off? Like, I got that done. But I was finding that um, in times where, like, I was feeling anxious about things, like, oh, my gosh, like, I have so much to do. I need to do this. Like, <clears throat> I just made a, a thing on my phone. I'm just like, here's all the things that I think that I'm worried about. <clears throat> getting done and it completely helped me. I was like, oh my gosh, all, who knew? All I need to do was write all this stuff down and I would feel less anxious about all the things I need to do. Anyway, one of those things that I just randomly decided to put on the list because in the, you can't see it, but in the box behind me is more nitpicks aloft so that I can make, uh, I showed the swatch for it, that bolt sweater. And I bought another sweater quant. I don't need that for another sweater that I'm gonna be starting sometime soon. Um, and so I wanna make a list of all the sweater quantities that I have so that I can just start working on them. Cause like I have a few in my stash and it's like I need for, I, if there are any designers that watch this, bless you. Thank you for making wonderful things that we can all um, make in our lives. But I need you all to um, like stop making things that are amazing so that I can have a moment to breathe and make some of the things that you all have already put out. It's just like it's too much and it's too overwhelming for me, but like I know you are a creative person and you just have to get all of these wonderful designs out of your head, but like, it's making me feel anxious <laughs> so much. Stop it. Um, so I just wanna make a list of like all the sweaters that I have yarn for that I wanna make and then just like stash it out. Boom, already have this, boom, already have this. I know that I'm still gonna buy for things because again people make beautiful stuff and like I want things just like in my own wardrobe and yeah like I want another one of these because it's just so good um but I need to make a list of all of them because it's making me crazy and I know some of you are like you can do that on Ravelry just like put it in your queue blah blah blah, blah. I don't really work off of a queue like that I'm like Ooh, I want to make this now, and then I go for it. I just need a list 
that I have written down that I can say, oh yeah, I have yarn for this. Like, I'm gonna make this now. That's gonna work for me. Anyway, this episode is very chatty, very long-winded. The last thing that I wanna show you all is, um, <clears throat> I said in the beginning that I had been watching Tashi from Stitches in Starlight. I'm pretty sure that's the name of her podcast. Um, and she's been doing like spinning and just like talking about different things and I've really been enjoying it. Like I don't play D&D, &D, but like I watched, I think that episode was like 48 minutes, just her spinning and talking about Dungeons and Dragons and I was completely enthralled and just like crafted my little heart out. And then I had to go talk to my roommate about it because he's played and he was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Not something I want to get into, but definitely am here for people that are into it. Anyway, she's been spinning <clears throat> and she kept referencing this book. Um, and uh, I was like, oh my God, I should just, I should buy this book because I think it would be helpful for me in my own spinning journey. And maybe it'll be helpful for some of you too, if you don't already own it. But it's the Fleece and Fiber source book. It's more than 200 fibers from animal to spun yarn. I'll link Jeff's website below where I got it. Um, you could probably find it in your local yarn store probably too I would assume anyway it's really dope and I've only flipped through it a little bit but I I appreciate that you know it gives you the different animal fiber and then talks about so much stuff like what it's like to knit crochet and weave it what it's best known for like what is it like to dye it um the staple length yeah just like I think there's even like best ways. Oh yeah, preparations and tips for spinning this type of wool. And then there's like photos of, you know, this is what it's like raw. This is what it's like spun up. This is what it's like knit up. And I just really thought that that was great. <laughs> so she kept talking about it and I was like, oh, I should just buy this book because I want to get better at spinning and who doesn't love a book or a great resource guide that we can go to to look things up um, when we need them or just for a little bit of advice or tips. I know that we live in a digital age and it's very easy for us to like go online to find these things out but sometimes it's nice to just like be analog and just like open up a book and do it that way as well. Um, or at least that's how I feel about it. Like, you do you. I'm not telling you to go out and spend your money on <laughs> on things. Don't listen to me. But, like, I do think that this is going to be a good resource tool for myself. So I'm excited to add it to the list of, or the nest of books over there. Oh, my, yeah. I won't get into what I just popped into my head. Um... <clears throat> I'm excited to add this to that. <laughs> and I think that's it, you all. That's a lot that we just went through. Um, again, if you were one of the three winners, please reach out to me via, excuse me, via Instagram or Ravelry if that's accessible to you. If you don't have either one of those, then like leave me a comment in YouTube and we'll figure something out. Like I can just like put my email address in there. Um, and because I would love to put these in the mail very soon. If you are interested in <clears throat> joining me at the beginning of the year, which we'll talk about more in the next episode, knitting that um, artist shawl, then, you know, use the next couple of weeks to go through your stash. Or if you're like me, and you love a sale, <laughs> you know, pick out some beautiful colors and yeah, we're gonna do that or I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna start that. And I would love for some of you to join me if you wish. Um, at the beginning of the year, and I think that's it, you all. <laughs> it's wild, four episodes this month, 
you know, three podcasts and one live. I feel like that's a lot, but I'm glad that so many of you actually reached out and were like, oh my gosh, it was so fun to like watch the episode and then go and watch the live or vice versa. I'm like, oh, that I that's very endearing. And it's nice that you all aren't like, how much content is this child going to put out? Um, so yeah, go watch those lives. They were fun. And yeah, enjoy the next two weeks. We are definitely in winter holiday chaos. And so take some time for yourself. Take some time for yourself. That's all I can say. Like, don't, not don't. I, I don't like using, I just said don't. I try not to use don't, especially with my kids. I want you to try not to um, get overwhelmed. And I know, like, that's easier said than done. But, like, let's try not to get overwhelmed in the next couple of weeks. Find some time where you can relax. Even if you are making things or you're choosing to make things for people, like... Try not to let that be something that's like giving, causing you stress, but like you can actually relax um, and do, like nobody's putting that, that deadline on you except for yourself because you are a loving person and wanted to make things for people. And like low key, if it doesn't get done in time, like who cares? You can show it to them and you can give it to them after. Just the thought that you wanted to take your time <laughs> to make them something, they should be appreciative. And if they're not, tell them to call me. I don't do that. Um, <laughs> anywho, I hope everyone finds time to relax and take some time for themselves over the next two weeks. And I will catch you all for one more episode to close out 2023. That's so wild to even be saying. And until then, make a peace, spread some peace, peace.